Scott, in trying to think about the nature of prediction, how can we begin to think about that, whether it's in physics or in, in, uh, in other aspects of life? Prediction is a critical thing. But people say that word, but how can we get a bigger and deeper understanding of prediction? So the, the traditional view of prediction in physics was that uh, you would know the complete state of the universe at any one time. And this would uh, then enable you, just by running the equations forward, to perfectly predict anything that would happen in any future time, right? This was the view enunciated by Laplace, right, for example, right? right? And, uh, you know, and, and it got a lot of encouragement from the success people had at predicting uh, uh, the, the movements of the planets and predicting exactly when a solar eclipse would happen and uh, predicting when, uh, when Halley's Comet would return and, and things like that. The solar system really does behave, you know, uh, pretty closely like a classical deterministic system. Okay, but most people have also heard that quantum mechanics uh, uh, threaten this, this view of the perfect predictability of nature, right? Quantum mechanics tells us that you can only uh, predict the probability that, a, that an electron will be found at one location or at another one if measured, right? You can't predict certainties. Uh, uh, now, people uh, have also heard that Einstein, uh, for example, refused to accept uh, this uh, um, randomness in quantum mechanics. He said that God does not play dice, or I cannot believe that, mm. that God plays dice. And he believed that there have to be, you know, underneath quantum mechanics, some hidden variables, right? That uh, there has to be some hidden determinism that the... Uh, that would restore the, the original Laplacian <laughs> view, right? And, and I think, you know, some people get the impression that this is still an open question, right? Because just as a simple matter of logic, it would seem, you know, that you could never prove that nature is not deterministic, mm -hmm. right? No matter how random, you know, the, uh, uh, the results of your quantum experiment look, right? You could always, a skeptic could always come along and say, well, I, I think that there is some pattern there, it's just that you haven't been <laughs> smart enough to find it yet. Right, I think that maybe, you know, okay, it's the digits of pi or something mm -hmm. like that. Right? And then it's people check it, it's not the digits of pi. So fine, something it's the else. digits of some other number, yeah. right? But it's, it's, uh, I think it's, it's determined, you just haven't figured it out yet. Okay, what's, what's not um, um, uh, widely appreciated maybe is that, you know, developments in f foundations of quantum mechanics since the 1960s have enabled us to pretty conclusively answer those skeptics and say that, you know, um, you know, either there's like a, a really, really insane cosmic conspiracy or else the quantum the outcomes of quantum mechanical experiments must truly be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. They must truly mm -hmm. be random. Mm -hmm. OK, and uh, the, the most famous thing that, that uh, lets us do this is what's called the Bell inequality. So uh, John Bell. Uh, in the 1960s proposed a certain experiment involving two uh, entangled particles, two uh, sort of quantumly correlated particles, where uh, the, he showed that the statistics of, of this, uh, an experiment on these particles could not possibly be explained by any theory where the particles would just agree in advance on mm -hmm. what to be doing. Or they say, listen, if anyone asks, you know, I'll be spinning <laughs> left, you'll be spinning right. right. There's no explanation of that that reproduces the right probabilities that quantum mechanics predicts and also that experiment confirms. Okay, and uh, so recently people have taken Bell's insight further and they've realized that you can actually use this, um, what's called violation of the Bell inequality to generate numbers which are physically guaranteed to be random unless nature resorted to some sort of faster than light conspiracy in order to bias the numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in 2013, it was proved by two grad students at uh, MIT where I work that you can start with just a hundred random bits just to jumpstart this process. And then uh, you can generate an unlimited number of additional random bits mm -hmm. by using the Bell inequality violation. Mm -hmm. And these bits must be random unless there is sort of a, a godlike conspiracy involving faster than light communication, but, you know, uh, across the whole universe. So uh, I would say that the indeterminism of, you know, quantum mechanics uh, should be considered a settled fact to the extent that anything in science is, you know, heliocentrism, evolution, mm -hmm. anything. Um, and now, I wouldn't say that this has anything directly to do with free will, 
because the indeterminism of quantum mechanics, you know, is merely probabilistic, right? It, you can still predict that, you know, there's the 30% probability of this, 70% of that. And I think if you can predict the probabilities, then most people wouldn't want, or I, I certainly wouldn't want to regard that as free will in any meaningful sense. But it is indeterminism. Mm -hmm.